everyone. Happy Lamapalooza. My name is Kate McGowan and I'm an educator here at the Akakik Foundation. And today we're going to be looking at how you can make your own butter at home. Before we can get started today, we want to gather our materials. Uh, so you all should have received a marble. Now I don't have my marble, so I am using the blender ball for a protein shaker bottle, uh, which should work just fine, but you should have your marble and you should have your sticker. You're also going to want a jar um, that you can seal. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a glass mason jar. You just wanna make sure that you can put a lid on it nice and tight so that you don't get any leaks when you're shaking. Of course, you're also going to want your cream. Now today I'm using heavy whipping cream. You want something that has at least 30% fat. So that will either say whipping cream or heavy whipping cream. You don't want it to say light cream. You don't wanna be using milk. Uh, if you have one of those, this activity is not gonna work out for you uh, because there's not enough fat uh, for the butter to coagulate efficiently. Um, you're also gonna want anything you wanna add to the mix. So right now I just have pink Himalayan salt. And then you're going to want, perhaps, uh, when you're washing it off, you might want gloves to use so you don't get butter all over your hands. And you're gonna need a source of cold water. So to start out, I've left my cream sitting out for a couple minutes, um, not a long time. You don't want it to you know, start to ferment or anything, uh, but I left it out while I was setting up this shot. Um, so maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, it still feels a little bit chilly, uh, but warmer cream, will help you help it coagulate. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my cream. That would have been a good thing to prepare, wouldn't it have? We're gonna add it to our jar. We don't want the jar to be totally full, definitely not more than halfway full. The larger the container, the more cream you put in, it will take a little bit longer. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna add uh, my protein powder ball. Uh, you are gonna add your marble. And then we're gonna close up the lid tight. And then all we wanna do is start shaking. <laughs> now, while we're shaking our butter, you may be wondering what exactly is happening here that makes this butter. Well, our cream and all cream has all these teeny tiny pieces of fat suspended in it, uh, which we call butter fat. And when we shake it up, basically what we're doing is we are causing those little pieces of butter fat to smash into each other. And when they smash into each other, they stick together. It's kind of like a mosh pit if mosh pits were really sticky. Uh, if that helps. So when they smash together, over time, they'll all turn into one big chunk of butter fat. And that is sort of what we're going for. When we get that big chunk of butter fat, that will be our butter. So once you've been shaking for a couple minutes, it's been maybe 10 minutes now, I don't know, I kind of walked around the house, looked at some emails. You're gonna have what looks like a thick foam, right? And it's gonna kind of sound like you're not even really shaking it anymore. You're not gonna hear the sloshing anymore, right? You might hear the marble moving around. You might think, oh, I'm done. Not yet. You wanna keep going. Right now what you have is sort of like the precursor to whipped cream. Um, and we wanna take it past the level of whipped cream. So we've been shaking a couple minutes more now, and you can start to see that, there's my little shaker ball, it's starting to coagulate. I'm a little out of breath because I've been shaking pretty vigorously. See that? This is where you want it, but we're not quite there yet because we're waiting until we start to see some of the extra moisture that is in our mixture, our cream, to start to come out. 
Once it starts to come out, once we start to see a little puddles form, that's how we know we have butter. So we have a couple minutes more to go, but we're getting close. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes. I've shaken it a little bit more. And you can see now that there's this big chunk of yellow and this liquid that's separated out from it. And when I shake it, right, you hear the liquid sloshing again. So this, this is where we want it to be. That big lump, that's our butter. And the liquid is what we call buttermilk. So from here, I don't want to get our gloves. Well, first, we are going to strain that buttermilk out. Let's see. I don't have that many hands. We're going to strain that buttermilk out. And what we have left behind is our shaker ball, big yellow lump. That is all of the fat. It is stuck together for the most part. And all of the liquid has been removed. Not quite all of it, this is what we're about to do. What we wanna do, now my ball is not gonna come out. What I wanna do is and take our butter, I'm gonna squeeze it out a little bit. Now you can do this in a cheesecloth or like if you have a nut milk bag, if you have a good, uh, good quantity of milk or of butter, that's what you wanna do. I'm gonna set it in this bowl over here. You see we're getting a little bit of buttermilk coming out. Now, if you have a small quantity, you can just pour the water right into your jar. All right, so now we have our fairly sizable ball of butter, but if we squeeze it, we can see there's a little bit of buttermilk still in there. So what we're gonna do and again, this is why I said you might want gloves. We're gonna take it and rinse it out. You can either do this under the sink, but my sink is gross and I don't wanna show you guys. So I'm gonna do it right here. You might want ice water for this. Definitely colder water is better um, because as you know, butter can melt. We don't want that to happen. I'm gonna take my water here. I'm just gonna just rinsing. Now again, if you've done this in a little jar, you're only going to have a little knob of butter. Just trying to get that last bit of buttermilk out. So I went ahead and sprinkled about three teaspoonfuls maybe of pink Himalayan salt on this. Now I'm gonna do is treat it just like dough. And sort of massage all that together. Now if your butter is kind of soft, you can Stick it in the fridge for a little bit before you do this step. And you might find that that makes it easier. You'll wanna keep this refrigerated uh, because the moisture content is still gonna be a little bit higher than butter you might get at the grocery store. And that moisture will cause it to spoil faster. Here at the Akakik Foundation, we have a special type of cow called American Milking Devon Cows. And these cows are heritage breed. 
The Livestock Conservancy refers to heritage breeds as breeds of a bygone era, and these breeds were more popular before the advent of modern agriculture. The cows on a modern dairy farm have been bred to produce as much milk as possible as quickly as possible. American milking Devon cows are a little bit different than modern dairy cows. They're a bit smaller, they don't really produce quite as much milk, but they're pretty good at pulling a plow, they're pretty good at being meat cattle, and they're a lot smaller than modern dairy cows, which makes them better suited for a small family farm. In fact, American milking Devon cows actually have a little bit more fat in their milk than cows on a modern dairy farm, which means their milk is better suited for making things like ice cream, cheese, and butter. By working to preserve heritage breeds, we're ensuring the future genetic diversity of our food system and making sure these special traits missing in modern agriculture continue to survive. So I went ahead and I stuck this in the refrigerator to firm back up uh, for just a few minutes while I was toasting one of my gluten-free bagels. Um, you know, you could try this with real bread if you can eat real bread. Mmm. It's really good. It's got a very fresh taste. Um, I'm really happy. Thank you so much for making butter with us today. If you enjoyed this activity, we have a whole host of other activities available as part of Lama Palooza, and you can come check out uh, a tour of the farm. Uh, if you want even more, you can check out our website. Our event page will have all of our upcoming events and workshops, both in person and virtual. Have a lovely day and happy Lama Palooza.